throughout the year and a lot recently. You guys know how I feel. I love his spirit, his determination. He's he's really, really, really helped us become a better team, and that that's that's vintage, you know. Rebound, making a clutch shot, blocking a shot. Those are all great things, and you know, they're team things. That's what he's about. Russell's about team, and he's always been that way. He's always been that way. And Brad what, a, what, a, what an incredible, I mean, I got so much respect for Oscar Robinson. And, I mean, like I've said it many times, privately and went in front of you guys. It's really amazing that growing up, you, you saw that record. You just thought that that would never, never be touched. Cause I, I grew up in, I grew up following the game so much. And uh, a, a, as a, a high level point guard is five rebounds, six rebounds, maybe fat lever, you know, he probably had seven or eight any given year magic probably had I don't know, maybe his high was eight or nine. But the, the do the, for him to tie his record and a chance to break it is just absolutely, it's like it's incredible. And that's, that's Russell. He's an incredible, incredible player and person. And obviously, Brad, uh, 50 points, but wasn't able to play there at the end. Uh, what, was, what was hurting him? Yeah, Brad, I mean, Brad kept, we didn't have much tonight. Uh, we just, we were, for some reason, we were flat. And they play a lot of small lineups and fast. This team is fast. And Brad kept us in. He kept us in the game with his ability to, to score. You can't guard him by yourself. That's been proven the last three years. People have, people have double teamed them for two straight years. And he's averaged over 30 points a game. And now lately, the last couple of games, they were putting three guys on him. He's just, I mean, he's that good. He's an all NBA player. Um, and we have two amazing guards that lead us every night. What they do, what they do for us is, is obviously important, but what, 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 how they teach our younger players how to prepare is as important because that's going to really help us as we get more experience throughout the years. Uh, the foundation of every young player is important. It's not vet veteran players. It's the right veteran players. That's how you get a good foundation as a young player. And we got, we got a couple of really good ones, even R Rolo, you know, Rolo had a, the line of the night coach. I know, I know, I don't know if you know this, but we needed, we needed this for just some good ratings. So, don't hang in there, have a good night's rest. And he was dead serious. I'm like, okay, that's funny, Rolo. That's why you got your um, hook shot blocked twice tonight. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. I'll tell it, I'll say that tomorrow to him. Fred. Brad. Brad, he, he tweaked his hamstring. Actually, he tweaked his ankle, but you know, Brad knows his body better than, I mean, both of those guys. It's incredible how they know their body. Brad knows it as well as anybody, and he didn't want to push it at the end. He tried to, but, you know, our guys helped him. You know, he, we don't need you to push it. And, and hopefully, hopefully it's nothing, nothing too serious, but I've seen him. I've seen him recover with ankles, and his body is all different ways, and he fi figures out a way to bounce back. But we won't know that until the next couple of days for our next game. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, just getting, getting back to Russell, he seems to, um, seems to have a flair for the dramatic. So many of these moments for him tend to come in the most dramatic possible way. I don't know if you remember the, the Denver game from a few years ago when he broke Oscar's single season triple-double record, and he ends up in, yeah. the in that one. Tonight he gets the game-winning block. What is it about him that and it tends to bring that out in moments like this? Well, he's, he's been, one, he's, he's worked his, 
he wasn't given anything. You, you, if you know his history, you know him. He wasn't given anything. His dad made him earn everything. His mom made him earn everything. And there wasn't a lot of offers. I mean, Irvine didn't even want to want to get him. So he finally went, ended up wanting to go to maybe UCLA is probably second choice. But um, he just uh, he just has determination and grit. He has the mindset and the work ethic as a as a reserve, like a, as a guy trying to make the team. And a lot of the great ones. I mean, I'm not saying he's the only one that has that mentality. A lot of the great ones. I've been around a lot of them. Patrick Ewing, Jason Kidd, Elijah one, Charles Barkley. They all have that greatness in them that they you just you sometimes you ask yourself, why are, why do they come back and work so hard? They can they can get 25 and 15 rebounds any given night, but they have that mentality. That's what makes them great. Their skill set, their talent, but their drive. And he has it. And I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. There's, you know, there's not a lot of things I haven't said about them. Um, I love coaching them. I coach them harder than probably people realize through you know, now it's a lot of times it's through one-on-one -on -one conversations or text messages or phone calls throughout the day. And he will call me and he will coach me too at times and tell me what he think, what he sees. And but we got a good relationship. We understand each other very well, but him and Brad, in our backcourt, we, we feel like we can compete against anybody. And we have, you know, the last, all of our losses have been basically last second plays and our, our shots, and, and but we've been in every game for, I don't know, six weeks now. Ava. Scott, I believe you guys also moved into um, sole possession of ninth place in the East with this win. Um, just how big of a deal is, is that for you guys to potentially, if you can hold on, get to not be on the road for the play-in? No, it's, it's, it's huge where we were. I mean, where we were. I know uh, you guys asked me how I put up a good face. It was, it, was, it was challenging at times, but I had confidence somehow we can get together and stay together and get on a nice little stretch of just being able to play games and not have to worry about guys coming in and out. And we still haven't had that yet. You know, during that stretch, we always had, seems like one or two guys miss it, but it, it's great that we were put ourselves in the play in position. We're still not there. The, the magic number, I don't know what it is now is a two uh, to get in. And then, but we want to keep, we just want to keep playing good basketball going into it. If we can keep moving up, that'd be great. And you talked about obviously um, Brad and Russ, but how, I guess, how well suited did those guys make you for for a single elimination type of, of play in tournament? Say that again. I'm sorry, Ava. I lost the first part. How how you guys you talked about um, what Brad and Russ are kind of able to just pull out of nowhere on a given night, but how well suited does that make you guys as a team for the single elimination type of of play in? No, I mean we they they obviously are our, our, our two best players have to play well, but our other players have to be stars in their roles. And we did. We did that tonight. I thought I thought um Gaff came in after he got the three three quick fouls. He came in and 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 really made an impact on the game. Alex, I thought he did a good job um making an impact, but everybody stepped up. Rui hit some timely. Timely shots, I got some timely shots, but the defense in the fourth quarter and overtime, that's what won the game. This team, this team is hard to guard. I mean, they play, you know, with all their injured, you know, their, their big is out. They, they play fast and they got little guards. They got, sometimes they've got three little guards on the court and they, they break you down and play the driving kick game. And they got Sabonis as a, as a bull down there. He's hard to guard. You know, he, you know what he's going to do. He's going over his left shoulder. And you try to keep it from happening, but he's so powerful and quick and relentless, and he gets there. But it was everybody has to chip, step in and we, once we get um, in the play-in game. Zach, coach, did tonight kind of remind you of like a more of a '90s game. Everyone was kind of getting hit hard. I mean, the scoring was up there, but. Sabonis so was getting knocked over. I saw another guy in the Pacers was hit, hurt. Three of your guys got nicked up. Just was it felt more like playoff time, right? Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, we were playing for something. Both teams, they wanted it. You know, they wanted it. They didn't want to, they didn't want to lose to us again. We just played them last week. 
they threw everything out there and they have, they have a lot of stuff going on, but they still, you still got to compete, you know, whatever goes on, everybody has a job to do players, coaches, referees, you all got to do it. And we knew that they were going to do that. We knew they were going to come out. I tried to warn the guys during our breakfast meeting and pregame that we cannot make this a track meet. We got to be a defensive team tonight. And we did it in the fourth quarter and only allowed them 23 points. And if we didn't do that, we were going to lose by eight. I mean, what does that say about your team that you, in your words, only played defense in the fourth quarter and still found a way to win like a must win game? Yeah, we got resolve. That's what they're about. It's a resilient group that is determined and they've kind of taken all these challenges. You know, they take all these challenges. Like Russell took the challenge. I know he knew the NBA's best scorer was out or right there with the, with, with, with Curry. Um, but he took the challenge, you know, his, that, his, like the last block. He's one of the few guys, it's like prime time, you know, Dion, he can, he has makeup speed. Russell can get beat, but his makeup speed is, is probably as good as anybody in the league. And his size and his ability to get from, you know, his jumping ability as well as his quickness gets, gave him, gave him that opportunity to block. No, nobody could have been where he was he actually messed up the coverage. We weren't going to switch that. And he was going to, and it dawned on him that we weren't going to, and he, then he, his burners came in and blocked the shot. His makeup speed is incredible. Matt Paris. Hey, Scott. Um, the first time you guys played Indiana, Russ was, I believe, 20. He would need 20 or 19 triple doubles in the last 28 games to tie this record. I mean, just the pace at which he's doing this, I think now it's 19 and 24 games. Just, are you surprised that he got there this fast? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm just glad he's selfish, man. I love selfish players and he was able to, you know, to do this with his, I mean, his triple, I mean, I, I know I'm joking obviously, but his, <clears throat> no, I didn't think he would get it this year, but I knew he's going to get it and he's going to get it and he's going to, He's going to pass it for, you know, I don't know how where he's going to end up with. It's really it all depends how long he wants to play. But for him to pass up Oscar Robinson is, like I said, absolutely incredible. I wish somehow, some way he can come. I'd love to meet him. Uh, he's one of my heroes and obviously Russell, probably his dad's um, heroes. But the break Oscar's record is, is, Un unbelievable there's certain players in the league history that you just they they just they're just on a pedestal you just don't think that they're even real so until you meet them you just think there's some uh myth mythical character but oscar robinson is one of the greatest players that ever play the game and he's arguably the top 10 players but to break his record is it's hard to believe coach and russell you know 13 years ago that i would be saying that He's going to break Oscar Robinson's record. It's hard to believe, but I'm happy that I'm saying that because he's really a special player. Thanks. We'll wrap up with Neil. Scott, five straight games, you guys have allowed 125 or more points. What are some of the things that you want to get cleaned up going into Atlanta? Well, I mean, we're definitely playing a lot of fast teams. That's not an excuse, but these are the top teams in the league scoring. The good thing about it, we can score as well as any team in the league right now. We're playing at a high level. Things are starting to click. Russell and Brad are just, I thought, I thought, you know, they would be able to play like this and play this well together. I mean, unfortunately, Russell hurt his quad early in the season, so it took him a while to get his get into form. Because when you have an injury like that, you you have to slow down in your, um, you know your 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 habits, and you know. But he finally turned it around, and and he's. I mean, those two guys are pretty incredible players. What'd you ask me anyway? What are you hoping to improve going into Atlanta? Oh, okay. No, we got to get back in transition. I mean, Atlanta is obviously. They got a lot of they got a lot of good players. They got a lot of good wing players. I mean, Trey is he's a handful for anybody. And 
Capella is a, one of the best rolling bigs and lob catchers and rebounders, shot blockers in the league. But their wing players are there's they got some injured players, but they got enough to survive about three injuries because they they're really deep at that, those spots. But we're gonna have to play well. It's gonna be a great challenge for us. We're gonna we get we get to be in Atlanta for 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 um, two games. It's kind of like a mini playoff series. So hopefully Brad is um, gonna be able to you know see how he is the next couple of days. But if not, somebody else is going to have to step up and to help us win, 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 uh, win the next two games. First of all, I know you and Russ go way back. Um, sure you expected this night would happen for a long time, but what was it like seeing him tie Oscar Robertson? Uh, it was funny. Uh, I told him he was on the free throw line. I think he just got, not a free throw line, they were shooting a free throw. And he was talking to me about a lot. But I guess I missed them all. And I told him, uh, because I forget about the lob, man. I, mean, I want to be the first to tell you congratulations, man. Uh, so happy for him, proud of him. Uh, and then I was like, let's go win this game. And uh, that's exactly what we did. So, uh, man, it, it's something that I, I don't think uh, will ever be broken. Um, I'm sure Oscar thought the same thing. But, you know, what, what Russ has done over his career is pretty special. I'm happy for him, happy for his family. Um, this is something that uh, tonight he really needs to enjoy and uh, kind of soak it all in because uh, it's, it's an amazing feat. And what was it like uh, just post game as, as Russ went into the locker room? I'm sure uh, you guys are pretty happy for him as a team. Yeah, and I'm sure it was a huge weight on his, on his shoulder. I don't care what anybody says, like, you know, just to kind of get it over with, get it done. Um, you know, uh, we, you know, obviously did the, whole throw to water bottle and water on you ritual. Um, and I know it feels good to get a triple double with a win. And uh, so uh, again, like it, it's something that, that uh, he probably really has, you know, soak it all in. Cause this is an amazing feat for him and his family. And uh, it just talk, you know, it's just basically he brings it every single night, rebounding, scoring, assisting steals. And um, you know, so this is not a situation where it was a, a selfish, a stat. He, he really brings it every night and he deserves, uh, you know, all the accolades. Fred. Hey, Ish. Um, you have known Russ for a really long time, as Chase said, and I know you've talked a lot about just kind of how competitive of a guy he is. Where, I feel like you know him well enough to maybe have some insight into this. Where do you think that competitiveness comes from with him? Honestly, um, you know, I think some people just made like that. Um, you know, obviously you, you have to go in, uh, you know, into his background and basis, his mom and dad, but I, I'm going to just be honest with you. He, he's just made like that. He's just competitive. Uh, he has a will to win. Um, and it's probably comes a long way with, you know, not being highly recruited growing up. Um, you know, I've told you guys a story about, you know, he came to Wake Forest. We thought we was going to get him a Wake Forest. Uh, he wasn't on, he wasn't a four-star, three-star, two-star, one-star at, at all. Uh, and that will and that fight, and that grit to be really, really good. Um, I think that had, you know, a tribute to it. You got to give his mom and dad, his brother, um, a lot of credit. Matter of fact, I would say all of the credit. You know, that's the basis. Um, he's got an amazing family. They put everything that you see out there on the floor and off the court uh, in them. And um, so they get a lot, a lot of credit. So, you know, you got to add all those things in there and then you get a Russell Westbrook. Brianna. Hey, Ish. So, of course, looking back to the beginning of this season and just seeing how far you guys have come to now, I mean, just thinking back when you had when you were out for COVID and all of those things, and then now to be able to push to be in the play-in tournament and all of that. I mean, what can you say about yourself and just being able to bounce back from that? And um, what's to look forward to with these last closing out games? Yeah, I, I know it sounds corny and cliche, but the season is kind of like life. Uh, you don't get too high, you don't get too low. Uh, you keep pushing and you keep pressing. Uh, knowing that you're trying to race to the finish line. And uh, I hope, you know, our season, my career is an example for a lot of people to kind of keep pushing through to get whatever destination you want to get to. Uh, and 
you know, obviously you look back, COVID, guys hurt, guys bang, banged up. Um, you know, we were 14, 15 games under 500. And now we're sitting in a situation where we're 31 and, you know, I think 36. Uh, we're not done yet. You know, we got to, again, like I said, run through that finish line. But um, it's a situation of where it's perseverance, it's pushing through, um, it's not getting too high, too low, uh, staying even keel and, and continue to work and push, um, you know, to the till you get to the end. And, and then that's when you can kind of do your, you know, assessment. But while you're in the fight, while you're in the race, uh, you don't have time. And you don't have time to be overly, overly emotional or be have no emotions. You got to stay even killed. And I think that's what we did as a team. Jason. Ish, uh, Brad had 50 points, but it looked like he was in quite a bit of pain toward the end there. Um, saw a lot of guys kind of patting him on the back. Just what did that effort that he put forth for you guys mean to the team? I was pretty special, uh, you know, for him to go down, first and foremost, he went out first in the beginning of the second half. And uh, we didn't know if we was gonna be able to get him back, uh, but he put his body on the line, came back and, and had an heroic performance. I mean, he had a 50 ball and uh, and that was special. I don't think we win this game if, if he doesn't play as well, if he doesn't play. Uh, so, you know, B does what B, I always tell him for the game, do what you do. And he does, and he did what he did tonight and uh, push it through, through a win. and. Uh, you know, obviously he's in a lot of pain. Um, and, and so, you know, he'll be okay. He's tough. He's from St. Louis. We, we saw you kind of appear to, to roll your ankle or something, but when, do you, when did you uh, tweak the hamstring? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, honestly, I couldn't tell you when I tweaked it. Uh, I knew it was just a little tight in the second half. I mean, the first play of the second half, I twisted my damn ankle. Uh, and... You know, I just wanted to make sure I went in the back, make sure it wasn't too crazy. I'm always a guy who bounced back pretty quick, uh, especially with ankle injuries. But you know, I went back out there, my uh, left hammy felt a little tight. Uh, I didn't think anything of it. I just kept playing, uh, pushed through it. And then uh, I think the layup on McDermott at the end, it put us a one. Uh, that kind of in intensified it a little bit. And then the final little floater I missed at the end, that definitely uh, that kind of put it over the top for me. So. Uh, coach just played a smart, got me out of there. And uh, thank God we closed it out. And you said the other night after your 40 point game that you were having fun again, you were enjoying being here. Obviously, winning helps all of those things, but where are you at at this point? 50 points tonight, you have to be having fun still, even if you're, uh, you're a little banged up. Uh, of course. Uh, I had the, the honor of having my parents at the game tonight. You know, they drove up three or four hours. So the last thing I'm going to do is waste their damn time. And, and watching me play like ass. So uh, my mom wouldn't let me live that down. So uh, <laughs> I always have fun and play hard whenever she's in town. Uh, so I give this one to them. Chase. Brad, just what can you say about the way that uh, the team closed it out into regulation and then overtime is, is obviously you weren't able to get back out there. Uh, it was obviously tough for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always a warrior. You guys know that. Um, nobody will ever be able to question my toughness and, you know, my uh, commitment to the team um, and my desire to just lay my body out there no matter what. Um, so in that regard, you know, it's always, it's always great to be able to have your teammates have your back and your support uh, when you go down. And uh, it's always... So it's always next man up, next man up to step up and, and do their job and contribute as best as they can. You know, uh, Davies hit, hit some big shots down the stretch and rest, rest, rest took over. Um, so uh, he's been excellent all year. I'm happy for him. He got, he got what, 180, 181 a day. So uh, that's a blessing, man. And, uh, you know, we're all happy to be a part of that. Uh, it was a historical night for everybody. You know, it was a bigger win. The win is, is huge. You know, we move up the ninth too. So it's even much more better. Zach. Brad, what are you going to remember most about this night in particular? I mean, don't say the injury, but outside of that, you know, imagine <laughs> <laughs> one of those games like you're going to look back on in your career and be like, wow, that was, you know, one of those that you'll just never forget. Uh, 
I mean, for sure. I mean, we were part of, I mean, Russ's historical night tonight. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of, you know, takes the cake on everything, you know, from the history of the game, you know, the evolution of the game, uh, and to where we are now. And, you know, Russ is one of the best players ever pick up a basketball, you know, and uh, to do that on a nightly basis, it's very tough to do. Uh, I think people kind of pat you know, kind of side eye them like it's uh, passed down or whatever the case may be, but it's, you try going out there and doing it every single night. Uh, it's very tough to do. It's tough to re get yourself mentally ready, you know. So uh, for for you to do that every single game, and what's this his fourth time doing it? You know, that's I mean that speaks volumes. That just that just shows his his approach to the game. You know how seriously he he approaches it and how seriously he loves it. You know, uh, he dedicates his all to his craft, to his body, and uh, we're happy as an organization we were a part of it tonight. Did you have you kind of found like a new love for the game playing with him? Uh, I would say my approach has been different. I feel like I always loved the game, uh, but I would say my my approach to the game and my mental and and just being locked in and being you know one of the best players on the floor at all times and channeling that that mindset. I think I definitely credit him for that. You know, to be able to witness him. I mean, he's MVP. Uh, I say it all the time. Whenever he's talking, I'm listening. He's giving advice. I'm listening, and because uh, that's where I want to be one day. So uh, it's just it's just a matter of just constantly trusting your work, putting in that work, and uh, and the results speak for themselves. But I definitely credit a lot of my success this year to him for sure. Thanks. Last question from Fred. Hey, Brad. Um, you guys have talked so much about Russ's competitiveness this year and how that's had an effect on you. I'm wondering, he's also kind of one of the most routine oriented guys I've ever covered. It seems to have the, do the exact same thing every day, every practice. When you watch a guy who has that exact same routine all the time and obviously has that kind of success with it, how does the routine aspect impact either you or maybe other guys on the roster? Does it? Every man has their own routine. I have mine. Um, Every man has their, their routine before games, off days. I mean, I do the same things when whenever I work out. You know, my shooting routine is the same. My workout routine is the same. Uh, and the same way, I'm, I think everybody's like that in the league. You know, you eventually, first couple of years, you try to figure out what your niche is, you know, uh, figure out what works for you. And then eventually, you know, you're able to develop yourself into a player to where you know what you, you have to work on, you know what, you, what you're going to do on the floor, and you, and you try to perfect those things. Um, and he's definitely one of those guys, you know, just his attention to detail, his attention to his body. Uh, he take care of his body. I think that's that's more than key than anything. It's being healthy. Uh, you, you're a healthy body. You're a threat at all times. So it's uh, it's amazing to see and definitely honored to be a part of it. Uh, and you could say a lot of his, his uh, I guess, tendencies have kind of trickled down to the rest of the team. As you're well aware, you tied Oscar Robertson. We've asked you about it so many times, but now that you've gotten to this point and you've actually tied it, uh, what what does it mean to you? Um, you know, like I've always mentioned, but I'm always so grateful and thankful and, and, and blessed. And, uh, I give all my my thanks to the, to the men above for blessing me with uh, talent to be able to go out and compete in, in each year, um, each season. Uh, along this journey, I try to find ways to. Um, be a better player, competitor overall. Um, and I take a lot of pride in doing everything at Impact Winning um, as much as I can, leave it on the floor. And to be in, you know, in a conversation with, with Oscar, um, for one, you, you know, I want to just thank him because he, he set the stage and he sacrificed a lot of things for, for us to be able to go out and play. And, and the times he played in and the things he's able to he was able to do back in the day um, has allowed me to be able to think, be able to do the things I want to do today. And I'm um, just grateful for him and I'm grateful for his words. And um, I'm so appreci appreciative of, of his support as well. And there was a, there was an offense rebound you had with like four minutes left in regulation where you beat three players to get it um, and then passed it to Rui for two. And it's kind of happened a few times this season where an offense rebound and then it'll be a close game. Is that kind of part of why, you know, you just give 100% all the time because you never know what play might make the difference? Yeah, you know, you um, you got to want it more than another player, and that's simple as that. Um, you know, you can kind of go through the motions and kind of let the game take control of you or you can take control of the game. And for me, I always try to find ways to 
impact and help us do anything I can to help us win. And that was a big play, I think. Plus, Rui got offensive rebound as well. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a big time, a big time play for us at the time. Ava. Congratulations, Russ. Um, are you in a place where you're able to kind of uh, appreciate what you've done or is your mind already going like, let's see how far I can take this? Um, thank you first. Um, you know, honestly, I, I always, I, I take the same approach every night. Um, and every time I step on the floor, I try to leave everything I have and along the journey. Um, if history and things are made at that time, I'm super grateful and thankful for it. I'm um, along that time, but I want to make sure that I leave everything I have on the floor. And, and when I'm all set it down, I can look back and, um, you know, nobody can ever say that I didn't compete at the highest level or I cheated the game. Um, I can go out and, and compete every night. And that's all I can, I can do each and every day. Fred. Hey, Russ. Uh, you, you, people around you have always described you as this guy who kind of you're very routine oriented. You go through the same stuff to get ready for every game, every practice, everything. Where where did you learn that from? Who's responsible for teaching you that strategy? Uh, my parents, um, particularly my mom, because she uh, she's always she always taught me to be on time, always taught me to be ready, um, always kind of taught me to kind of make sure that I have you know everything in order um, and kind of everything else to fall in place. Um, my parents did a good job of raising myself and my brother and. Um, you know, I give them the, the, the thanks for making sure and creating that mentality in my mind of having to, to, to stay on a routine. And then as I got in the league, um, I was able to talk to the greats and Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, um, and understand what it takes to be great. Um, and, you know, having a routine, having something that you stick to regardless of good or bad, win or loss. Um, consistency is the hardest thing to do in this league. And I take pride of being one of the most consistent players, um, you know, to even to play this game. And, I, uh, you know, with that comes a lot of sacrifice, time away from my family and kids and people that are my loved ones. And, you know, I'm grateful that they understand, um, you know, the mission and understanding that I take my job very seriously. So um, it's a lot that goes into it, man. It's, uh, you know, and it's, it's good to just kind of see it work out and play out for you sometimes. And sometimes it don't, but I always stay consistent and, and stay prayed for and having faith in, 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 in my, my craft. Matt Paris. Hey, Russ. Um, what do you remember about meeting Oscar in, in 2017? And just, it was after you broke, uh, you averaged a triple-double for the first time. Just what do you remember about that meeting? Uh, you know, honestly, the meeting wasn't even, honestly, for me, was, um, I was just kind of overwhelmed, honestly, um, and just all smiles because, he flew to Oklahoma City, which he didn't have to do that. Um, he took the time out of his day and his the things that he has going on uh, to come uh, present me with a award and, and sit down and talk to myself and my family. And uh, just about that moment, um, I, I was able to just talk about a life because I, I, I was honestly more interested in um, there were a lot of social change and social injustice going on while he was playing. And I was very intrigued about how he was able to kind of get past that and still compete at a high level. And, um, you know, I was able to learn a lot. I was able to kind of sit back and, and understand how, you know, he sacrificed so many things and the way he played the game and to go too many things. And, you know, I got no excuses to go, to be able to go out and compete and, and do what I do. And I was grateful for that conversation. And what you guys have done as players within the past year, in terms of all the social justice you guys have done um, for the movement, just, it was there anything that he said to you that kind of helped you uh, navigate this past year? No, 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 nothing. I was already kind of my mind's already sure. was already there. Honestly, I'm very, I'm always grateful and 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 show my respects to the ones before me because um, if it wasn't for them, um, you know, we wouldn't be able to play the game and do some of the things we're allowed to do today. So I'm I'm very uh, respectful of uh, the ones before me. Thank you, Zach Akuma. Hey, Russell. Um, I think it was your ninth season that you started averaging double digit rebounds. Um, but what do you think changed for you that allowed you to start averaging 11, 12 rebounds instead of seven or eight rebounds? I don't know. I just, I just go get it. You know, um, like I said, I, when I'm on the floor, I feel like I'm the best rebound on the floor. Um, and that's just what it is. 
All right, last question to Chase. Yeah, Russ, you had the go ahead free throws, uh, the block at the end, and it was all, of course, after Brad went out. When he did go out, what was your mindset as you uh, went out and closed the game? Um, you know, I think at that time, we tried to find ways to be able to, you know, bring the team along and find ways to execute down the stretch, especially in overtime, um, and find ways to win the game. And that's all you can think about. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can get Brad back and, and, and help for good news and make sure that he's all good to go. Um, because, you know, his night is, can't go unnoticed either. He had 50. And much as we talk about myself, he's, he's he kind of been keeping us together along the season and being uh, very exceptional along this journey. So I'm grateful to have him as a teammate and, and to see him, you know, do great things for himself as well.